wording I like to preach on this song. The door. The door. Let us just bow our heads in prayer one more time. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and will do. Lord, we thank you that you're God who reigns on high and that there, there's none like you, Lord. Once again, we come before your throne just rebuking every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray a special hedge of protection around about us as church as members. Let no evil or danger penetrate, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you just anoint my mind and my lips to bring forth your words, Lord. And anoint our hearts and our minds to receive it with gladness, that we may remember it throughout the week, but rather dwell upon it and let it take root upon our hearts, that it may transform us into your image even farther. For we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The door. We read John chapter 10, verse 9 this morning, and we realize that doors are very important in life, especially the day and age we live in. Merriam-Webster's online dictionary defined a door as a usually swinging or sliding barrier by which an entry is closed and opened, a means of access. Doors are extremely important. If they weren't, we wouldn't have so many of them. We have a door to enter into our at the outside of our house on the outside walls. We have doors that go in between walls to separate rooms. We have doors on our bedrooms. We have doors on our bathrooms. We have doors on closets. Doors are extremely important. And they all perform different purposes. But at night, I'm sure one thing we always do is at least make sure that that door is locked. It provides a barrier. And it's not only an access to allow things to come in or people come in. It's not only an access to allow individuals to go out. But it's also a barrier to keep out the bad and to keep in the good. Or we may rephrase it. It's a barrier to keep out those unwanted things that we want outside and to keep those things we want inside, inside. It serves as a form of protection. As I look at this passage here that we read this morning, John chapter 10 and verse 9, Jesus stated that he is the door and no one enters in but by him. If we look at this passage, he's talking about a sheep, a shepherd. And he talks about that sheepfold. And we're, this morning we're going to talk about those individuals that are involved there. The very first thing I want to talk about is the thief. That door that we have on our folds keeps out the thief. That door that we have on our bedroom has a lock as well normally to keep out those that are unwanted. For us in our homes, perhaps we lock the downstairs doors, but we also lock our bedroom door maybe at night if we're the only ones in the house because it serves a protection. If someone would break through and get into the house and they get in through the first door, the first barrier, they still have that second barrier to go through. Why? Because when it comes to thieves, they don't come in just to make themselves at home, but they come to take that which they want. See, we live in a day and age where it is no longer safe to leave our doors unlocked. Maybe we remember that time growing up where everybody left their doors unlocked. You could go down the street and you knew everybody's house doors were unlocked. We, you didn't think much about it. But in today's world, you can't do that anymore. It doesn't matter if you live in the country or if the safest of towns. You cannot leave your door unlocked. When I was looking at statistics on the Crime Prevention Security Systems website, it was cpps.net. In 2005, they claimed that 34% of thieves go through the front door, 22% go through the back door, and 32% go through an unlocked door. Doors are extremely important, but if not well maintained, or if we're not careful about them, the thief will slip through and use that point of access to take that which they want. And he 
people are very brazen and they're very bold. They'll go through an open door, even if the light's on. I remember when we were going to get my father-in-law the one time to bring him to live with us. We were gone somewhere and his front door was open, his lights were on, it was evening time. He went into the bathroom and somebody was brazen enough to go right into the trailer there, stole my computer and walked out with it before he even realized it. All he heard was the door was gone. Um, go ahead. You know, people are very brazen in the time in which we live. And they'll go through an access point. They're not afraid. But when we look at the sheepfold, it was a different structure. It was a different setup. If you would study the old time sheepfold, normally it was a stone wall. It was enclosed on three sides. It had a wall on the front. And the only opening was the door. Everything else was shut up. And that is where the shepherd was. The thief wouldn't dare go through that point of access because normally if it was wide open and it was left empty, the sheep were gone with the shepherd. But when they came in at night, the sheep entered in by that one access and the shepherd slept there that night. That is where he rested, that he was the guard for that fold. The thief that came for the sheep that night couldn't enter in by that access point because it wasn't just a wooden gate. It wasn't a metal barrier, but it was the shepherd himself. So the thief had to find a different way to try to steal the sheep of old time. He would have to climb over the wall. He would have to grab the sheep and put them over the wall. But first he would have to catch that sheep. And that would be hard as well. See, Jesus said, Verily I say unto he, you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. That thief and robber would have to climb over that wall. As long as that shepherd was on guard, he would never dare go in by the door. He would find a different way to find access to the sheep. He would climb over that wall. But you realize as long as there is adequate security and protection, thieves would never be able to enter from that position. They must do it a different way. See, the thief is out to take that which is not his. So he's not going to come in an obvious way, but rather he's going to find a loophole. He's going to find a weak point, and he's going to climb in. Whether there's a hill on the side of the um, fold that he can jump over the fence, or whether there's a low point in that wall for him to climb. But once he gets in there, he has to do one thing. He has to catch that sheep. But sheep are very skittish. They're afraid. And Jesus said in John chapter 10 and verse 5, and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. We need to be careful whose voice that we're listening to in the day and age we're living in. Because the devil is out to kill, steal, and destroy. And he's trying to lure us whichever way possible. That is why it's imperative this morning that we know the voice of our shepherd. That we may follow him. As long as we are one of God's children, the, the devil will try to creep in. And he will be sly and he will be cunning. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any other beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Notice that the serpent didn't just come strolling up to Eve through the field. He didn't come down maybe the path in the garden. But he was on the tree. You know, when I think of things being on the tree, normally they're trying to blend in. You know, that's their habitat. If you see a, a come across a snake and it's near the base of a tree or wrapped around it, it's probably got a skin color that's camouflaging to some degree. If you come across a lizard that's on a tree or somewhere else, it's probably camouflaged to fit that environment. It's hidden. When we look at this passage in Genesis chapter 3, it didn't say that the serpent was bold. It said it was subtle. It was sly. 
It was cunning. He didn't come up to Eve like a dog and come running to you when he came home. But rather, he was there. He was waiting for her. He had himself in a position to pry and prey on her. And when we look at a serpent during this time, it was extremely beautiful. All the more able to deceive her. You know, not all things come in nice packages. You know, I'm not sure how they used to advertise cigarettes back in the day or anything like that. But even alcohol nowadays, they make it look tempting. Like it's a great time. They don't tell you about the liver disease or cirrhosis of the liver. They don't tell you about the lung disease. But rather they bore you in. With vaping, they didn't tell you or realize that you'd have popcorn love that is absolutely incurable. But rather they made it look like a good time. They made it look appealing. They made it look pleasant. You know, that's how sin is. It'll come to us look appealing and pleasant. And for us to say that there's no joy in sin would be inaccurate. Because there is pleasure in sin for a time. But we need to be on guard at all times. And make sure that we know the voice of the shepherd. The next person I want to look at this morning is the shepherd himself. Because the shepherd, he is the door to the fold. You're not getting in and you're not getting out without him knowing it. You have to go through the shepherd. See, the shepherd shows the sheep the way to safety. Jesus saith unto him, lets us know in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Matthew 7 and verse 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. You see, the shepherd, he is there to protect the sheep. He is there to show them the way. When we talk about in um, Psalm 23, Psalm 23 is the perfect past, passage to realize the duties of the shepherd and what he does, goes through. And one of the passages states, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You realize that there were times when the shepherd would have to lead those sheep through um, dangerous passageways, dangerous cliffs, and maybe there would be a little section out that he would have to go over and show them that you have to jump over at first, showing them that it is safe, it is doable. He would never lead them in a dangerous or deadly way, but rather he would keep them safe at all times. The shepherd was the way to safety for these sheep. These sheep depended upon the shepherd for their survival. And where he went, they went. He was the door to the fold because once the sheep are there, he was their protector. He made sure that nothing was going to get to them. And I can only imagine sheep being skittish as they were brought into the fold. You realize we all have war worries. We all have doubts. And even though the scriptures don't say it, but I wonder if some of the times a practice of David upon his heart was there at the door of the sheepfold. Long before he was ever in the palace playing the harp to the court, to calm Saul, he was there at the door of the sheepfold, calming the sheep for the night. Maybe there were those that were a little skittish, that were having trouble finding a place to rest. I don't know how sheep find a place to rest. I've seen dogs, though. You know, they'll circle and circle and circle and circle before they sit down. I don't know how sheep are to rest. But maybe there were some sheep that needed to be calmed down. Had to be um, uh, calmed down. Had to hear that so uh, smooth, calming sound of the shepherd's voice. Maybe singing and playing. For them to be able to finally rest for the night. To find their place to lay down. 
See, the shepherd wasn't there just because the sheep were there and they were his livelihood. But he spent so much time with them, day in and day out, that he knew them. And that's why they were able to know them, their shepherd, by the sound of his voice. He was there to talk to them. He was there to sing to them. He was there to soothe them. The sheep knew that when the bugs and the gnats and the parasites were bothering them, that it was the shepherd that would pour, pour the oil upon their head. Thou anointest my head with oil. The purpose of that was because sheep, by putting oil on their head, on their fleece, it allowed the parasites and the bugs to stay away, the flies, it kept them away. Though thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy, the sheep knew it was the shepherd that would go around with a pot of oil, pouring it into the holes of the snakes, that as the sheep were feeding, if they would try to come up, that they would slide right back down into their den, not able to get to the sheep to harm them. The sheep knew that it was the shepherd that kept them safe at all times. It was by his voice that they were fed. It was by their voice that they were calmed by the um, still, smooth, still waters. And when they fell asleep, they knew it was the shepherd who was always there at the entrance of the gate, who would never allow anything bad to come their way or happen to them. This morning, <clears throat> I wanted to talk about one last person, the great shepherd. See, so we can talk about the thief who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. We can talk about the shepherds of old and how they protected their sheep. But you realize that for us this morning, Jesus is the great shepherd. That he is the one upon, upon whom he was really talking about here in John chapter 10. As he talked about the shepherd and sheep and the thieves who comes, he finally got around to who he was really talking about. Himself. Because in John chapter 10 and verse 7, then said Jesus unto them, Again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Before Jesus, there were all kinds of false prophets. They killed and murdered the true prophets, but there still were all kinds of false prophets. And you realize that even today, there are all kinds of false prophets. There are prophets out there telling people whatever they want to hear. I remember listening even during through COVID. I don't know this dance and I don't know him that well, but there's some guy with the last name of Christmas or something. And he prophesied during COVID that the sporting industry was going to take a massive hit and this and that. I don't know, I'm still, I don't know if it really did. I'm still watching the sporting industry to see if it really took a massive hit. But even today, we have those. You send me $100 and God will give you $1,000. I seen one lady years ago, you send me $500 and God will give you the entrepreneurial spirit. <laughs> There's a lot of spirits out there. I, I realize that, but, and I know they're not all marked in the Bible, but I can't imagine God up there creating, oh, right there's the seraphims. Oh, now I'm creating the um, cherubims. Oh, right over here, I'm creating the entrepreneurial spirits. I, I just don't see it. God gives us wisdom and direction in business dealings, don't get me wrong. And he'll help us. But give me $500 and I'll give you the entrepreneurial spirit. We live in a day and age of all kinds. This morning it was even mentioned of that church that has tarot readings in the church, that are godly tarot readings. There's only one way in heaven, and narrow there is, it is, and few there be that find it. Why is there few that be that find it? Because it's narrow. And the trail has already been blazed by our great shepherd. But the problem is, not a lot of people know his voice. This morning, God, may we know your voice like never before. May we 
follow after you with all that is within us. May we strive to know you like never before. This morning, we need to make sure that we are entering in through the door of Jesus Christ. We live in a world where they claim that there's many ways to heaven. But once again, that's not true. Jesus said it himself. He is the only way to heaven. He is the door. It's narrow. But if we would know his voice, we would be able to enter in. John chapter 10, 9 through 10. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and kill and to destroy. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it everlasting. Sister Beth, if you come to the piano. Then John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This morning, I just thought that God was reminding us once again that he is the door. He is the only way to heaven. The thief cometh to kill steal and destroy. He comes to get us off the road, get us off the straight and narrow. He comes to distract us and he'll play his music to try to lure us. But God, may we know your voice more clearly than ever before, that we may follow after you with our whole heart. If that is the desire of your heart this morning, why don't we find ourselves a place in the room?